We are asked to solve for x in this cubic equation. Before we begin the algebra, let's take a look at the problem visually. We can plot each side of the equation as a separate function. The curve y equals x squared minus x cubed and the line y equals 12. The solution to our equation will be the x-coordinate of any point where these two graphs intersect. Plotting them, we can see the two graphs. Visually, it appears there is only one intersection point, right here at x equals negative 2. But a picture isn't a proof. Our mission now is to prove this algebraically. To begin, we'll rearrange the equation into standard polynomial form. Subtracting 12 from both sides gives us this. By convention, the leading term of a polynomial should be positive. So, let's multiply the entire equation by negative 1. Then we multiply by negative 1 to make the leading term positive. Finding where the two curves intersect is now identical to finding the roots of this cubic equation. We'll use the rational root theorem to search for integer solutions. The theorem tells us that any integer root must be a divisor of the constant term, 12. Let's test these candidates. Let our polynomial be p of x. We'll start with an easy candidate, x equals 1. Plugging in 1 gives us 12, which is not 0. So 1 is not a root. Next, we test x equals negative 2. This evaluates to 0. We've found our root, confirming what the graph suggested. Let's quickly verify this solution with the original equation. Substituting negative 2 for x simplifies to 4 minus negative 8, which is 12 equals 12. The solution is correct. Since x equals negative 2 is a root, x plus 2 must be a factor. We'll find the other factor using synthetic division. First, bring down the leading coefficient, 1. Multiply negative 2 by 1 to get negative 2. Add to negative 1 to get negative 3. Multiply negative 2 by negative 3 to get 6. Add to 0 to get 6. Finally, multiply negative 2 by 6 to get negative 12. Add to 12 to get 0. A 0 remainder confirms that x plus 2 is a perfect factor. The resulting coefficients form our quadratic factor. The equation is now fully factored. Wait a minute. We found one solution, x equals negative 2. But this is a cubic equation, which should have three roots. How can we be sure there aren't other real solutions? That's the right question. To find the other roots, we must analyze the quadratic factor. First, we'll compute the discriminant to determine the nature of these roots. Substituting a, b, and c into the formula b squared minus 4ac, we evaluate the terms to get 9 minus 24. The discriminant is negative 15. A negative value means the remaining roots are a complex conjugate pair. Using the quadratic formula, we can find these complex roots explicitly. We simplify to get 3 plus or minus ii times the square root of 15, all divided by 2. This gives us our two complex roots. For a final layer of rigor, we can use calculus to formally prove the root's uniqueness. Consider the function f of x, whose roots are our solutions. Its derivative, f prime of x, is 3x squared minus 2x. Setting the derivative to 0 gives us critical points at x equals 0 and x equals 2 thirds. The function's values at these turning points are 12 and about 11.85. Crucially, the local minimum is positive. Since the lowest point the curve reaches is still well above the x-axis, it can never turn back to cross it again. This formally proves that the root at x equals negative 2 is unique. Let's summarize our complete solution. For the equation x squared minus x cubed equals 12, there are three solutions in the complex number system. Of these, there is only one real solution. The only real solution is x equals negative 2. Thanks for watching.
If you found this explanation helpful, please like and subscribe for more math content.